Hi, Julia. How are you? Hi, David. I'm really, really well. I'm I'm so happy to be here. Great. And we've had a little chat, but um, yeah, it would be nice if you could just begin with um, maybe a personal story and then, um, you know, we, we discussed one or two topics, but um, about your the sequence which led to realization and um, the way things uh, have been going on since then. I'll I'll try uh, I'll try not to make it uh, too long because when I was uh, preparing um, and thinking, my mind was offering me stuff like you're probably not gonna have enough to talk about and and then I said I, I, maybe I'll just put it on paper and see. And then I saw that actually I'm gonna have an opposite problem of when to <laughs> when to stop talking, <laughs> and that I could write a small book probably about uh, just 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 my uh, experiences. Really, that was a surprise. Okay, so um, if we're gonna go back to my childhood. I thought about it a bit because I noticed that a lot of times people um, on your channel talked about hard childhood experiences. And actually my childhood wasn't terrible. It was Good. it was reasonably okay. I mean, it depends on the prism, I guess, mm -hmm. that you tell the story. Because if I tell it to my children, they say, okay, you had a tough childhood mom, but they really compare it to their own experience. I think that comparing to people that kind of growing up, other children, I had a pretty good experience. I um, was born in Russia mm -hmm. uh, when it was still a Soviet Union. And actually, for a Soviet parents, my parents were really liberal and just really different. And they they allowed me a freedom of being myself quite a lot, which I think was you, you didn't see a lot of that at, mm. back at those times. But still, growing up, I I think that the um, pain of separation from from unity I remember it being very present I remember uh, feeling very lonely even though I had a pair of loving parents and a brother and grandparents but still I I um I remember this feeling that's probably one of my first memories really this feeling of loneliness and not belonging to the world in general. Just um, I remember staring at the at the sky, kind of at the stars at night, and just asking where where is my home? This place is obviously not my home, and I I just felt like I'm a person with amnesia. I I, I have a home probably, but I just don't know where it is and and yes. where I'm at what I'm doing here. So that that was really, um, I think that that feeling was accompanying me a lot growing up. And also I was trying very hard to make sense of, um, of external reality. Mm. I remember a lot of um, messages of fear and suffering, but not things that happened directly to me but more uh, like stories that um, I was exposed to. And um, I also um, I also was an empath. I think I'm way better now because being an empath is, it was really hard. I could empathize uh, and, and being connected to the suffering of everything that was around me and somehow I wasn't great at being empathic uh, with joy but rather with pain and suffering and especially uh, animals that was I mean that was constant I, I it, it was just just a pain uh, seeing animals in pain and and also people and and uh, my mind in order to cope um 
my mind got very strong. Mm. I I got very, very strong at rationalizing and talking to myself in this um like this internal conversations, trying to reason with myself and explain why the world is how it is. Um <clears throat> And also, um, I don't know why, but uh, I really felt special a lot. Oh, good. I, I mean, I mean, uh, maybe it was the trick of the ego mind um, that 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 kind of told me that you are special, which kind of meant you are better than others. But in a way that also uh, pushed me to look for meaning of, mm -hmm. of it all. Because, okay, so if you're special, so, so what makes you special, really? And you don't know the answer. So, so it, it kind of kept um, me looking, I guess. And sometimes that, that feeling, though, is actually coming from your infinite nature. Um, Maybe. And it's just, it's there and it can be quite powerful. But... The, yeah, the mind can get hold of it, but it is that feeling of, um, you know, the, that there's something which is really tangible and the, that you know that. So um, it does give you that feeling. Yeah. And, and actually, I that's something that I often wondered a lot, how it seems that, um, well, at least speaking about myself, it seems like I came with a set of basic settings yes. that I didn't choose. It was, it really never felt like a choice because I, 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 I had this burning question inside of what is the meaning of all this? Who am I really? What am I doing here? So I had, it's like I had no other choice but to start seeking. And I, 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 I didn't know that seeking was the name for the process, but I was already doing that since, since I remember myself in this body, this lifetime. So I couldn't really do it any other way. It was just, just, just installed with my, uh, yeah, with, with the basic settings really. Um, so growing up, um, I felt kind of different because I um I was sleeping a lot. Mm -hmm. I was uh I don't know where it started, but um I felt that that nobody's is uh, feeling as tired as me. Mm -hmm. That as as a girl, I think even pre-teen years, I um I was just looking for kind of what's the time that I'm going yes. back to well, the world. And, the world was probably quite overwhelming because you were so sensitive and so you needed some relief from that and and if the with the sensitivity and the empathy um being triggered especially you know if it was upsetting you then sleep was a a way you could just um be released from that really yeah yeah be, to 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 escape and it never seemed like um a waste of time because i i often heard how um it's a waste of time but to me that realm of sleeping and dreaming it was uh it, it was way more pleasurable than the waking world and it never seemed like a waste of time and <clears throat> i i um I thought about myself as being lazy, and that was voices from outside. Mm. <clears throat> but I, I still, I, 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 I still would just sleep a lot until, until past year, really. It, it, it was with me for sleep issue, being tired and wanting to sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. That was accompanying me a lot. Mm. Um. But if if I go back to um, to um, my teenage years and childhood, now in the retrospect, I understand that I was being led. If we talk about effortless, you yeah. know, effortless being and just being effortlessly led, it it just somehow happened, and it didn't make a lot of sense back then. But now, when I look at it, it 
it's it's very beautiful how it was all or being guided being guided and being yeah 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 um it didn't feel all the time like i now it feels like that and now i actually feel i feel secure in in this in being guided but but then i didn't have the security it's only in, in the retrospect that that i can understand but uh, uh, um an example would be um that being 12 13 16 i would write poems mm. which i didn't really understand what they what they meant and only now coming into realization i understand the meaning that's amazing because, yeah so they were coming through you really at that age yeah it was something like mentioning stuff that um um i'm all around myself which didn't really make a lot of sense then no. or that i can hold my name in my hand like stuff that 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 mm. now it makes sense but back then i i i i just felt like okay this uh, lonely special <laughs> girl <laughs> You sensed something about it, though, didn't you? There was it, uh, the way it came through, which was quite inspiring to you for those um, images and those thoughts to come through. I mean, it, yeah, it's fascinating, though, isn't it? The, the depth that was there, really. Yeah, I think I kind of confused it for megalomania because <laughs> it was always about the oneness mm. and about. Uh, but to the ego mind, it seemed like you're only able to write poems about yourself. Yes, but it was not my Julia self. Yes, only then yeah. I didn't get words for it. Yeah. Um. So the then kind of being guided. Um. I started meeting people who would be like uh, steps, one after after the other. And the first one uh, was a lady at school. I felt quite lonely. And I think I approached the school counselor saying that I'm lonely and they offered me to talk to this, this really magical lady. And to this day, I don't know who she was, where she come from. It's, but, but she was an older lady, very wise. And, and she would sit with me once uh, a week and we would just talk about just, just things, just, just, just big topics, <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't yet spiritual, but somehow it felt so magical this encounter that it's it stayed with me um, as something that, um, like how my seeking began to shape, yes, to in take a conscious way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think she was the first figure that I can remember. And then I had my English tutor. Mm -hmm. I uh, I actually didn't mention it, uh, but when I was 10, uh, my family immigrated and we came to live in Israel. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, so so um, writing poems and meeting these people, it, it already happened uh, in Israel. Um, so my English tutor was this amazing woman who was so much more than just the English tutor. And she uh, was actually a spiritual person herself. And she gave me this book. And these books were so rare. It was like photocopied on, on you know, like in a machine, not even a normal book. Um, and I don't really remember what exactly it was about, but it was something about spirituality. And then she introduced me to Carlos Castaneda. Oh, great. I think I was about I was about 15, 16. Well, that's very young, really, because yes. <laughs> but but we we just discussed things, we just talked about things, and and I remember getting the sense that that's it. Like that that's that's where the answers should come from. I, and then when I was 20, I met um, a friend that became a very close friend, and he was um, experienced in seeking, 
let's say. <laughs> and um, he had many books at home and I borrowed all of his books and I just remember this amazing sense of discovery. Um, first of all, there is this book, I think it's three books maybe about uh, Buddha, about Prince Gautama. Oh, yes. And I read it and I just remember um, like reconnecting to things as if I knew something about Buddhism, as if I, it's some, something that, that, that was very familiar. And uh, I, there, there are many other books there. And I also found Osho there, Osho's books. That's transcriptions that his um, students, um, like they put it in writing. I don't think he ever wrote books himself. Mm. But I just remember going through this process of, uh, first of all, I had this huge thirst for, for books. Mm. And uh, every spiritual book I could um, I could get, I would buy and I would read. And I had this process of, um, I would probably call it awakening maybe, not realization though. But I felt that um, every piece of, of darkness, was cleared away from my being. I felt full of light. I felt like I was breathing light and breathing out light. And I thought at that moment that you can never lose this feeling. Like I believed honestly that it's mine forever, <clears throat> but it wasn't. Huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this friend, um, which who gave me the the books we had this um relationship that didn't work out mm -hmm. and it really plunged me into the depth of uh, suffering all again and i just couldn't believe myself that that I could leave this place of light and go back into feeling miserable that a person doesn't uh you know belong to you yes but it was a lesson for sure. Um, so when I disengaged from uh, from that relationship, and, and that's actually about uh, being guided effortlessly, I just said, I don't want to be in any relationship whatsoever. Um, I'm having too much fun just being myself, being my free, careless 22-year-old self. And on the same week, I met my husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> well it's good to be decisive isn't it in either direction and then you find that things come really clearly to you that was that's great though. yeah yeah I mean I I, I yeah it was it just felt um like it, it was no um coincidence whatsoever no. the moment I released tension and started enjoying myself yes <clears throat> I found the person that I'm still with. Yeah, who, um, in 20, 20. Hmm? Well, the compatibility presented itself when you were in that state of freedom and independence, which is, um, that's a really good sign, really, because you there, there wasn't, um, you weren't seeking a relationship out of a sense of lack at all. You were feeling full, and then you, you met someone who is just really compatible. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true, and um, and it was very effortless because meeting one another, we just said, uh, okay, that's it. On the first date, basically, I came back. My parents asked me how was it, and I said, okay, that's that's it. I found my person, that's and amazing. he said, it it was just it was I just, just it. knowing. It was a knowing, uh, knowing without any any doubt which I'm still uh, very grateful for, and I find it very special. Um, well, it's quite unusual, really, isn't it, to, you know, to meet someone so effortlessly and for the compatibility to be there. Um, that, that's that's a, true. It's a very simple version of the human experience, really, is <laughs> that one, the one you've had. But, but for me, uh, beforehand, the years that were prior to meeting him, it was a lot of uh, looking and a lot of feeling miserable about uh, 
um, being alone and whether I will find somebody, but then letting it go, mm. but letting it go honestly, yes. uh, wholeheartedly letting it go completely, then, then we met. That's amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and just the um, the way we surrender sometimes. So it was like it, it wasn't it wasn't like a conscious act of a surrender. It, it was more that you didn't really want to go through the pain and suffering. So you you took the decision that you weren't willing to entertain that again. Exactly. Exactly. Um. But I before that, when I when I was still thinking who is who would be my ideal partner, I imagined another seeker. I thought, okay, I, I for sure I need this spiritual person who uh, I can have those deep conversations about uh, you know and meditation, yeah, and um, and enlightenment and all that. Uh, but inside me I also kind of resented it a little bit because coming from Russia um, it's a very practical culture it's like you need to have a good profession you need to be sensible in life so I think within myself I thought uh, you know another seeker we yes. might just it would have been very balanced really would it he probably and it was the mind saying that really when the infinite being was guiding both of you and and the balance was there really so you had those those qualities uh and your husband probably very practical and um and very sensible <laughs> he's he's pretty practical uh, and also uh, but but interestingly enough i think well, being very skeptical to this day about uh, this whole idea of uh, um, true nature even, because when I tried to explain my um, experience of true nature, he said, oh, so it's basically you're saying that the brain is just registering without um, computing, like without processing the information. So that's just the brain doing the registration. And I was like, well, okay. I mean, if if you feel like seeing it this way, it's fine. <laughs> um, so he has these explanations about, about stuff. But on the other hand, I think he was very free and intuitive from within, yes. which took me many more years to to become more like that. So it was balanced in a, really in a curious way. Uh, but it was it was important for me though for many years because he he was skeptical about my stuff. Mm. It was important for me to get his approval, like to to get him to my side and to wow. to you know to to get him to see that I'm right and and um, the world is more than just a materialistic world. And uh, it's um, so it led uh, to me early on in a relationship taking him to some pretty random channeling session. Oh, wow, he's very tall, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> the, it was really bad. And um, they channeled this entity. I mean, I couldn't bear it. It didn't seem, I don't know if it was fake or not, but anyway, it, 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 it was really not. Uh, the experience that I wanted to um, expose my husband to. So he was making fun of me for years because like, okay, so um, I, I won't say the, the name of the entity so not to embarrass them because they still do the channeling, by the way. Yes. Uh, but, but when I said, okay, so, you know, uh, we need to, there is a laund laundry that needs to be folded. And it's like, oh, did the entity say it? <laughs> you know? and yeah so uh so i stopped i kind of i i got very cautious about um trying to bring him into my world just this. i learned not to put any pressure there um and and actually um after after a short while um 
the, the seeking almost completely stopped for me. Um, so for, for I, I would say 10 years, I just stopped being interested in books. I stopped, um, it's almost like this question about meaning of life. It stayed, but it wasn't as burning and pressing. And I didn't feel like um, doing anything about it. Yes. Um, How did that timing relate to your having children? Oh, so that's that's really so that's really my next point. Mm -hmm. um, I, it it resumed uh, the seeking and this journey. It um, resumed through the children and and in a way, I, it's so connected that it's as if my children are are the journey itself. For me, it's so intertwined. And it's interesting how it came to be because um, my first uh, child, my son, who is now 12 year old, and he, he's brilliant, bright. I, I mean, I, I love my children very, very much. Um, but his um, birth at first was a destruction of old me. Wow. Um, so my world came tumbling down. I had this baby. Everything that I imagined about handling the baby and being the school mom and uh, and uh, being really good at it, 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 nothing of that happened for the first year. It's actually that. He was a very, very sensitive baby. Mm -hmm. um, and we met in the, our sensitivity. And um, I was really scared of not being a good mother and not knowing how, how to handle this baby and what to, to do to do it right. And, and I lost all sense of time. I didn't think that it would ever end. I couldn't imagine how he would grow up and my life would be different. I, I thought, okay, so now I have this huge responsibility. My life, it, it does not belong to me anymore. And it's going to be like that forever. That That's, that's how the experience went. And I just felt how everything I knew about myself was crushing down and I didn't know who I was. And the only thing that helped me is that I understood that that's the process that is taking place. And I thought to myself completely rationally because it felt it it felt very rough. Mm. But rationally, I said to myself, we're um, old things are um, where is the destruction of the old? It it will give way to something new. And. Then um, I actually had, uh, when he was about one year old, I had this big experience of nothingness that happened to me during group meditation. And I think that was in the beginning of the healing and restructuring of the new me. Yes. I, um, I went to a group meditation and um, at first I remembered going into this trance where my neck started to swing back and forth so hard that I thought, will my head, you know, stay in its place? <laughs> and then, <laughs> it, and it was actually, it was actually a bit funny. And, um, but then we laid on the floor mm -hmm. and I just remember looking inside and seeing this vast, enormous endless blackness this space mm. and, and i still have chills you know when i because i get connected to this place when when i talk about it and i asked i asked it who are you and it said i'm nothing but it was i'm you but i'm nothing 
and yep. it was also very clear that the opposite of that it was I am everything everything and nothing and I was just I think it was the biggest uh for me um the biggest experience of um something significant like that it felt so very different to everything else mm. and I remember them seeing the body the person from outside and just noticing oh the body is hungry let's go uh, feed it some nuts and dates <laughs> whatever was there <laughs> but then I started to want to hold on to this experience that was the mind mm. kind of saying okay so how it's so magical how how not to let it uh, go away and uh, it went away because I started trying to hold on to it um, but um, soon after, I, I wanted a second child, and I actually wanted my second child because I didn't want to tolerate the fear of thinking how hard it will be. I wanted a second child, but, but I didn't want to sit and be afraid, so I decided I'm just, you know, we're gonna, I, I, I will take us there, you know, we'll just have another one as soon as possible. And uh, that's what happened. And um, my daughter, who is now 10, she uh, brought the reconstruction of and the and, uh, becoming of the new me. And okay. it was so magical and it was so effortless. Mm -hmm. That was my first experience of effortlessness. I needed to do nothing at all. When she was born, just after the delivery, I remember feeling this bliss in my body, physical bliss, from the head, you know, to the toes, hmm. for maybe three hours. And when I when I held her, I just rem I remember this feeling of healing taking place, like everything, like a puzzle, you know, is being, you know, yeah, get this picture is mm. being shaped together, and and it's just magical, really. And um, she was always very um, connected to where she came from and she used to talk in a manner that would be more um was more clear than most of i think people that teach manifestation <laughs> because for example she she told me um she asked me i think she was about four and she asked me looking from our balcony um she said mom what are the buildings made of and i started saying something about oh they're made from concrete and this and that and she said no she stopped me and she said you know what they're made of they're made from me i remember making them from the my oh. essence oh. and i was like oh <laughs> you know stuff stuff like that it's useful wow and she, or she would say something like, "My friend came and she, she, she told that she was worried about something, and my daughter offered to help, and um, and she told us, sit and uh, close your eyes and make your world completely blank, just, just mm. make it white. There is nothing. You are in this, just in this white space, and imagine colors." Uh, and start start uh, drawing everything that you want in your life. All your dreams and desires, just draw it. And then we were just sitting kind of doing that. And then she asked us, how does that feel? And we were like, great. And said, okay, now open your eyes and enjoy it. It's yours. And, I'm like, yeah. and, and she, she was just a young child. Incredible, right? amazing so yeah and 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 i was enjoying it so much um and also i um yeah i told you in in the talk that we had a bit earlier how um 
she told me that I was her daughter. Mm -hmm. I was her baby once. And we, when we would hug each other, I felt the oneness hugging itself and loving itself through the, these two entities. And it was really not important who was the mother and who was the daughter. And it was very clear that it, it's, it was shared experience. We didn't even have to discuss. And uh, my son was a bit, uh, he, he wasn't as vocal about stuff like that, but he was very connected <clears throat> to, and um, he was sensitive in a way that he would describe um, people's hearts in colors. Wow. Like he, and he would nail the state of the person exactly by saying, okay, I can see a bit of pink here, but also a little bit of of darker color and and the person will be oh my god yeah i have this thought so so, so he's he's pretty amazing as well that's fantastic or, I, mean, I can go on and on about the kids but yeah um, it, so they retain those abilities really yeah I, I mean yesterday i um i um i mean i told the, my son about a, a friend of his that, that he should invite to our place and uh, and he told me uh, you seem to really like her mom and I said yeah I like her quite a lot and asked does she remind you of yourself at that age and I was like oh my god I never thought about it I just liked her but but it made me stop and think and yes so no. yeah, so so they 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 retain the abilities, <laughs> uh, but but it's it's interesting that um, for my daughter um, at some point she started to get pulled in more and more into uh, life drama uh, around friends and around uh, being popular or not. And I talked to her a few times, and at one uh, conversation, she told me something like, uh, "Mom, I know, but I chose to come here, and I choose to go and experience the drama." So, <laughs> so for me, I often think about um, what is my place as a parent. Should I? Uh, should I encourage her to stay connected to her true nature? Or should I just let her kind of hold it in my heart knowing who she is, but uh, let her go and play the game of life in this, you know, um, this world of duality if she chooses? So, well, so it's a question. Well, it was amazing the way she she made the conscious decision to do that because with lots of children it's as though they're sort of conditioned into that by the world but she she maintained the distinction and and then she said well this is a conscious choice so yeah you have to let her do that really i think so and she she also she wants to be an actress oh, that's which i think yeah goes really hand in hand with yes. uh, saying that she wants to to play the drama. She wants to, um, yeah. But from time to time when I get, um, whenever I used to get uh, in the recent um, year or so in, into too much drama myself, she would uh, remember who she is and pull me out. Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> You may need to do the same. Yes, yeah, so, and 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 I I often I mean I tell her that, and I'm saying you did that for me, and I'm I'm trying to do that for you, or at least I say to her I will always know who you really are. Yes. So I I will never forget, and I will know it, even if you disconnect from it. Um. And also, so we, we still know when to do that if it's required, won't you? Because um, yeah. it'll just be very apparent. 
yeah, I think when we stop um, worrying too much about when is the right time to do, then the answers become apparent, really. Well, it's, yeah. it's already quite clear, the sequence from knowing her true nature and then saying she's experiencing more of the drama of the world. And then she's interested in drama. So the whole thing is like a conscious play. And it would be it would be really interesting because the more the more she maintains alignment with her infinite nature, then the more successful she'll be as an actress, really, because that's all we're all actors and actresses, really. For sure, that's something that um <clears throat> she find a valuable <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll be sure to, to to tell her that yeah i'm sure she knows I'm already she could, she could probably tell you and i a thing or two <laughs> yeah I, i'll probably um i mean i'll uh, let her hear the recording so she she can decide for herself and and also i think that me being here um probably is for for my children as well. It's mm -hmm. not just for. Uh, so uh, I mean, if if we're gonna go back to the process, um, so when my daughter was born, very very soon after, my um, my seeking resumed very very naturally, and again, it felt like I was uh, led and guided. Um, so it was it went from one source to another and they would just come up um either on youtube or someone would uh, mention somebody and and so i've been through so many that yeah. i can't um i can't remember them all but a lot of them were russian speaking sources because i i'm lucky to to have russian as as a, my mother tongue and there's a lot of resources there um, but also I uh, listened to a lot of Esther Hicks mm -hmm. okay. and um, a, and that's how I discovered uh, this whole idea of manifesting. Mm -hmm. And then I found um, a guy uh, that I followed for many years and I, I came to know him personally even. Uh, his name is Lee. He's based in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And he's a, he writes and um, makes uh, webinars in Russian. And he is presenting this quite in-depth um, knowing of the mechanics of the universe. Mm -hmm. and so it's not only how to manifest whatever you desire, which I think is very, very appealing to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. I think it's this carrot that... <laughs> yeah. that's, <laughs> you know, I think many people follow that, uh, but but that also um, that's also a way to go to, yeah, to be guided to your to a deeper a deeper level somehow. So yeah, that's good. There, there, there are. Um, so, so what I liked about him is uh, the effortlessness because it's the first person who I really heard say that you don't need to do anything in order to have everything you want. And that's something that I always felt like that's the thing for me, like this effort. Mm. Everything should be effortless. But uh, growing up, I, I was told I was lazy or I, I maybe I wasn't told directly, but I thought I was lazy because I wanted just to have everything without hard work. <laughs> Sensible. I never believed in hard work, really. And uh, so, so so I thought, OK, so uh, if somebody can teach me how to um, manifest everything and um, be a deliberate creator effortlessly mm -hmm. that sounds really really good so i um, practiced that uh for a few years but even that became um too hard right. because in order, <laughs> in order to manifest you need to kind of it works it actually works i yeah. i mean everything 
everything I wanted, I got. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's not that, that it's not satisfying, but anyway, to, to be in the state of higher vibrations, it's this constant effort mm -hmm. that needs to be done. Yes. And so, so um, I had during th this time, I had a lot of glimpses of bliss, mm -hmm. but not something that I could hold on to. But from time to time, I would find myself sitting and just breathing and just having this ecstatic experience of just, just, just breathing air. But I could never really maintain it as something constant. Um, then um, I discovered Joe Dispenza, who I, uh, in previous year I known, but didn't uh, sound right to me. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden I got this huge uh, thirst for meditation and I couldn't meditate before it, it, it I, I would always fall asleep. Mm. Um, and and I started meditating for hours, but but that was somehow uh, short lived. That that only lasted for a couple of months. Um, and then um, and then I had another baby, mm -hmm. and that was something that um, I'm still he's. 10 months old and I'm still trying to integrate um, him and the experience of having him um, into this journey because I know that he's very, very significant and I can sense that he is very, very special. He's um, another sorry? He's another of your teachers the third one oh for sure for sure and he has this i mean may, maybe i'll tell you first about the dream that i had when i was pregnant with him i had this amazing dream about a dolphin that i'm sitting in this home and it's on the beach and there is a man there who says there are dolphins here but you're probably not going to see them they're not going to come to them. And I'm saying, let's see about that. And I go to the water, sit there at the edge of the water, and this amazing dolphin swims right into my arms. Mm -hmm. And and we hold each other. And for the whole dream, I'm crying. And I feel lighter and lighter, like every limiting belief and every um, negative experience that I ever had is being shed from me. And then I come back uh, completely renewed to the, this place in my dream, to this house. And then the man says, how are you going to hold on to this amazing experience? <laughs> and then I tell him, I know what you mean completely. And I have such compassion for you saying that, but I know that I no longer need to be bothered about it at all. And then my daughter came home and uh, she made, uh, without knowing about my dream, um, she made this sign for a baby when he's going to be born and it had a dolphin on it. <laughs> so I connected the dots and I said, okay, so I think that the dream and the baby, there, there is this... Yes. Uh, and and he was born uh, with the most amazing deep blue eyes. Wow. Um, like the ocean, really. So and they, I mean, it's not. It didn't change. Still, like, and whenever I, and his eyes, they stop people on the street because it's something very unusual. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when I look into his eyes, I'm really. I see this universe there. I, I I mean, I don't know. I'm still integrating, really. I think there's so many wonders that are going to open up. Come. Yeah, with him. Um, yeah, so, uh, and uh, and uh, continuing that, I, um, 
I found uh, on YouTube um, a, a young woman who is named Anna Brown. Mm -hmm. And she is speaking about non-duality. Mm -hmm. And she is really fierce about it. I never met anyone so just fierce and fiery about about just pulling people in. So I felt like having a conversation with her. So a couple of months ago, I had a conversation with her. And uh, the, I mean, we're reaching now this whole... Um, part uh, approaching yeah. realization. So, so we are uh, time wise, we're already in recent, uh, recent past. Um, so I, I talked to her and still I felt like she's talking about turning awareness in on itself. And I heard this phrase a lot but I could never really get what it means. So again, I was feeling that I'm very close to, to, to it, but, but somehow not quite there. It, not quite sure what needs to be done. And then it's so paradoxical because it tell you like you don't need to do anything in order to achieve it. But if you don't do anything, you're just in the old ego mind place or how, so, yeah, but I, I felt how something is changing. And um, also, um, I have a spiritual family that I was very, very lucky to find. It was through this um, Russian-speaking author whose uh, webinars we used to listen to. And uh, through him, I found a um, few people that... Um, I feel very connected to, and three of them are very good friends of mine, and we are all situated in completely different countries, one in California, one in Ukraine, one in Turkey, <laughs> and, and I'm in Israel, so, so really it's, um, uh, we communicate on WhatsApp and Telegram, and, uh, and I think they've been a huge part of uh, me um, discovering my true nature because um, talking to them and kind of sharing our experiences um, I think helped a lot because they provided it, it was a shared experience we decided to be totally honest about ourselves without um, trying to make things pretty Yes. Uh, because I, you know, I used to be a person who would um, kind of shine bright when things were great, and and be this example for for others. I mean, I I was often told that I have this presence and people like it, and but whenever I struggled, I would be a bit embarrassed about it. Really, like me, you know struggling again with kind of lower vibrations <laughs> after all those years isn't it time to you know uh, uh to kind of leave it behind already so even to myself it was hard to admit that i was struggling and um and share it with other people uh, and to say um that maybe something scares me or I have some thoughts or worries. That was something that I, I, just, I just didn't do. And with this group of friends, I, uh, I started doing that. Mm -hmm. And it was we all allowed each other to confront, I think, and just to be very open about where we are at. And I think the effort that went towards being okay and present myself mm. in a particular way, um, it, it got released and uh, there was more space for something else. Um, and I had a lot of fear about waking up, like we, um, about realizing my true nature because um, 
I used to fear it a lot, uh, thinking that maybe it will make me detached from my uh, uh, my my children or uh, uh, or my family in general, or maybe I won't um, care as much for I don't know for 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 tasty food, for example, or for <laughs> for for a good glass of wine. And I was like, oh, so what's I mean. Yeah, what's the point in being uh, enlightened if you're sitting there kind of staring at empty, <laughs> empty space? And, yeah, and 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 you don't choose. And um, another thing that really scared me is whether we have a choice, a free will, or we don't, because some of the people that are enlightened they say no, it just you know everything just is. And I thought, oh, that's not a fun game to play. No, yeah. that's good. That's good intuition. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and like, yeah. So so it didn't seem appealing. So, but but it was this mix of of also my uh, my mind throwing in fears about you know you shouldn't rush so much to go into that place. Um, but. I think at some point I uh, gave this consent. I think after having a talk with Anna Brown, I I said, okay, it's it's time. I I'm open to it, and I'll let it come somehow. I I don't know how, but I, I consent. And then um, I had a very effortless experience finding you, David, oh. um, and. Uh, Actually, um, I found a Conscious TV a little bit before I found you, and it was suggested to me by the YouTube algorithm as an unintentional ASMR. Wow. So I don't know. I think probably today everybody knows ASMR, but ASMR is like um, just, just listening to relaxing voices or sounds and just feeling relaxed or 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 um getting yourself sleepy right? and um i listen to stuff like that from time to time so um an algorithm on youtube um offered um renate's uh voice renate's interview with some female uh interviewee and I listened to her and I was pretty much blown away by the content because it was so deep. Mm. So I went uh, in, to the channel and I and I discovered it and I was amazed that it was it was just this wealth of of knowledge, of content, of wonderful people and and I shared it straight away with my uh, with this, my spiritual family, let's say. And we were blown away, all of us. And we said, okay, so how can it be that we've been seeking everywhere and this channel was here and all those people on it were here for 15 or 17 years, all, all along, all the time. And we never knew. Like So we decided it was um, just a consciousness shift allowed for a parallel realities to collide <laughs> so it appeared <laughs> in this reality because that's honestly that's that's the sensation and then um i found uh before i found you i listened to an interview with tony samara i never knew existed as well and he had this wonderful meditation on his channel which i felt that it did something to me. It's a third eye meditation. And somehow I just really felt this space effortlessly coming to life when I did this meditation. And it just felt to me like some activation. That's like, again, another step, another way of being guided. And then I found your interview and I connected so well and I shared uh, I shared this interview with my friends and they all connected really well. And I think two of them realized their true nature. And I, and I had an experience. 
<clears throat> as well. So, um, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that <clears throat> I think the simplicity really is. Everybody said. I think a lot of people said that the the simplicity of how you um, how you offer it, <clears throat> and it's so practical, and it doesn't require any I don't know a, a, anything. I was um, I was listening to your um, interview with. I think Stephen Hackett, mm. if you yeah. remember correctly, realizing his true nature. And it was on a rare evening that my um, family were all, uh, they were not in <clears throat> the house. So I had this quiet evening to myself. I even think I had a glass of wine, which I don't know how many people. <laughs> and <laughs> I was having a piece of toast. And he realized his true nature. And then for me, it all stopped this whole mind chatter. And it, and it was just this experience. And the toast was, it was really delicious and crunchy. And I was like, oh, you can do that <laughs> while sitting in your true nature. It doesn't mean that you don't have any joys or pleasures. It's but it was it was really very very different once you see it you, you really cannot unsee it 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 was something that um it was just very different to any other state and um and i remember really understanding what you were saying in that interview about filters how everything else, uh, Julia and her body and her senses and her mind and uh, everything that comes into experience, it's all filters. And and how the, um, this stillness, this field is just there. It's just there. And how, and it's so amazing how uh it's there but we forget that it's there and and um and i felt very neutral i think that was my really the first experience and, and this quiet of the mind it was really amazing it was such a relief oh wow like okay so this was an option all along not to carry all this heaviness really all this processing um but then <clears throat> i saw on the monitor that the baby is crying and um it was initially a bit hard for me to gather myself mm. um because it was oh the baby is crying and then, ah, Julia's baby is crying. Right, okay. What would she do? <laughs> oh, she would go to the baby to to um, to calm him down, to, to put him back to sleep. She needs to say a few words to him of encouragement or, you know, like to say everything's okay. I'm here. And it was really hard for me to even to, to, to come up with words. Um, so I think I got a bit scared there. Like again, the mind jumped and I was like, oh, I told you, you're going to be a bad mother after you self-realize. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I decided that I would write you. Uh, and I did. And you helped me a lot with your reply straight away. Um, but uh, but still, um, I the, 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 um, the day after we went to, I, I, shifted again very easily to to the uh, effortless being state and we went to a family barbecue from on my husband's side of the family and uh, it was amazing because there um i felt another shade of the state not neutrality but more of 
love. Um, there was a woman there, a distant relative, and she was talking to me basically things about her work. And I, I was almost teary. I was just so deeply uh, resonating and feeling this person and just the beauty of the miracle of this human form and I never experienced anything like it before but I was quite disorientated because I was driving and on the way I missed my turn three times and I, I didn't feel like uh, time mattered uh, so it, it's something that it it takes uh, for sure it, for me, uh, I'm I'm still integrating. It was um, about a month ago that it happened, uh, so it would be honest and fair to say that for me, integration is taking place for sure. Um, That's fantastic, yeah. and the um, the experience you had at the barbecue was um, an experience of unity. Oh. Really, which is something it will become much more accessible where there's just that it's so simple but it's just when the um the subject object mode is absent so that but but for it to be there so early on that's great yeah it's 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 nice that you say it because uh i do get invitations uh from my mind a lot that says something like, oh, you see, you're not fully there yet and stuff like that. Um, That's a very common one with the mind. The mind loves to use that one, especially where there's been clarity and realization because there's no ammunition left really other than to say, well, you're not quite there, but it's because the mind knows you are there that you get that one. I'm actually getting bombarded with invitations and that's something that, um, it, it was very helpful for me to listen to your uh, other interviews and uh, hear that people are experiencing it, that it's uh, that it's normal. Mm. And it actually makes sense. Um, so hopefully my experience or my um, yeah. story that I'm sharing could help somebody else, uh, perhaps but yeah, I mean the the invitations are wow, they're and they're tailor made and they're very precise. And at first, I was I I felt very good because I was very elegantly kind of declining them. Uh, my father had a thing with his health and uh, surgery and stuff like that, and I was very. Uh, clear there and it sorted itself out uh, miraculously uh, but then uh, it started being like more sensitive things things about the baby and you know like it, it's not only the mind that offers invitations it's like the circumstances gather for the mind to interpret Um, sorry it's great that you're so aware of the way it works it's thanks to listening to you really and to your uh to your um talks with with people and i think you have actually if if somebody struggles on the topic of invitations um you have a brilliant uh interview with hell waskin i think one of the videos yeah. that you have that you talk about it and you laugh there and it's funny and it's a kind of in this lighter way but uh, but it addresses this uh i enjoyed it very much i again i shared it with my friends and uh wonderful i uh, i mean if we have a bit of time left i can i can uh share a story about a dream that i had about uh, with invitations but if we're short of time then. No, that's, we have plenty of time. And also I'd like you to just mention the topic um, we were having a chat about earlier about um, children and the way they can 
um, they can remain in alignment with their infinite nature and, and how that's um, important to you. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, fine. I'll do that straight away. I'll just, uh, just to finish the topic of, of invitations because it made me laugh really how uh, I don't know which part of Julia is doing that. Is that the mind? Is that the, I don't know, who is dreaming the dreams and processing them in a way that the mind remembers? But I remember listening to uh, your videos and 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 really thinking about invitations because that's that's really something that is going on. Mm. Um, and then I uh, I had this dream how I'm sitting in a bar and you mentioned uh, that's that's an example that you give about being invited to a bar where you would need to overpay. So I'm in this bar with my husband and um a guy a bar owner comes and says um it, it takes place in turkey because that's where people go to get hair transplants and veneers mm. so this guy comes and says uh we do have veneers here and i'm saying i'm definitely not interested in any veneers <laughs> i love my teeth they're quite all right and 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 he's saying, but come on, you should look at our uh, the work that we did to a customer here. So he brings this guy who looks kind of, you know, not very presentable. And he opens his mouth and it's the lousiest piece of work <laughs> that you could ever imagine. Looking horrible. And it's like, would you like something like that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, no way. And, uh, and then they say, okay, well pity that you don't want that but maybe you'd like a coffee and I'm saying I don't like I mean I don't want your coffee and it doesn't even smell or look good and then they say oh, or maybe tea and I decline that also and then they offer me coffee again and I just say okay I mean because you keep offering so so many times so I take one uh, cup of coffee and then they give me the bill and I realized that they billed me for all three of the beverages and they cost about, uh, let's say, one hundred dollars each. <laughs> and and like I and I know that they are overcharging me because I agreed and uh, I decide at the end of it, I decide not to pay. And then I, I walk in towards the out of the building and I just notice how it's lousy and in the daylight that it's already like it's not a bar and so it looks so shady and crumbling and falling apart um so so it's interesting how how I I woke up and I knew it was about invitations invitations yeah that's <laughs> that's a great one so yeah so really so uh uh if we're gonna go to the um, topic of of parenthood and um, maybe you could mention a little bit uh, about your profession as well, that would help maybe. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I'm actually a family therapist. Um, I uh, I studied in London. I lived there for th three years, so I have a soft, warm spot for <laughs> for the UK. Um, yeah, and I miss it a little bit. But anyway, so I studied uh, family therapy, I think because I had um, a very clear and good communication mm -hmm. growing up with my parents, and I wanted to do more of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very clear that that's, that's something that I would like to do. Um, I don't work with children, however, I work with couples. That was somehow life took me to the direction of working more with adults than children. But this um, issue, the subject of communication uh, within the family, it's something that was on my mind forever since I had uh, my kids and I think that I have this approach that um, you could probably call something like radical openness or radical honesty. And I uh, I discuss 
pretty much every, I mean, of course, age appropriate, but uh, like there is stuff that you don't want to offload, you know, like stuff from the news or something. Uh, but but I do discuss everything with them. So they know, for example, that um, I'm here with you and we're recording a conversation and uh, I shared about uh, realizing that my true nature and uh, about the relief that it brings and that my uh, reason in meeting uh, with you is actually to um, get, getting myself more anchored in this place. Um, but I'm 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 very open to um, having more. Um, discussions really with maybe there are other people that are interested um people that are parents or i don't know they're just kind of generally interested in, in uh, this whole idea of um giving children a choice i would say i mean it's it's a good question really whether whether um I mean, I, uh, yeah, I don't know quite how to put it uh, in words uh, precisely, but but I think that most of us didn't have a choice growing up uh, about um, uh, the state of oneness. Mm -hmm. We were pushed towards the duality and we're told that we are Julian, David, and you know, Sarah, and John, and... Uh, uh, and that we need to be in a certain way for people to like us or to do. Um, <clears throat> and I think we didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. However, I think that I would, I would not want to be in a place where I don't give my children a choice to play the game if they want to play it. If they want to play the game of um, duality. Yes. Um, I I don't think I can um, take this role for them to to prevent them, but I would like to offer them a choice um, to know that the two worlds are available, and um, it's unfolding for me as well. I mean, I I I uh, I thought um, knowing my daughter, I thought she's going to be um, connected and open. Um, um, to her source mm. always, but she chose, and sh for now she's choosing to be in a place of the life drama more than than the other um, the other world, and um, I'm I'm still learning it, but I think that um, I think it's going to be. You know, more and more in demand um this this topic of uh, is as more and more people are really there is a shift in consciousness i mean i i see it it's happening and i think that people are really uh com coming to realization i think in 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 significant numbers by day and i think it's growing so um, so I think it's going to be <clears throat> more and more relevant. Yeah, definitely. What it's... do you do with your children? How do you present it to them? And I like your idea, though, that it's an option. It isn't really you're denying them, <clears throat> you know, anything of the human experience, but just to know that there's a foundation to that, which um, which they can retain or it's available whenever they wish to to return to it. I would like to show them, um, to show them, uh, or at least to, to offer them a way to experience it for themselves. Yes. Well, really the, the key thing is to know that learning to function from impersonal being actually enhances the personal realm rather than detracting from it. So 
that, that's an aspect really. But I'm sure these things will begin to emerge. It's a topic which has come up quite a lot recently. So um, I'm sure it's going to going to develop. But thanks so much. It's been a yeah, lovely conversation and um, yeah, so unique as it is with everyone really. But um, yeah, so entertaining and um, I'm, I'm sure lots of people will really enjoy that conversation. Thank you. I was, the moment I saw you, I was filled with such joy. <laughs> I, um, I really, really, I, I thank you so, so much for, for everything, for, for appearing in, uh, in uh, my reality <laughs> and, uh, and for being there and to meet you uh, in person like that. It's, it's, um, it's a blessing and it's it's a joy. Thank you, David. I enjoyed it so so much. Yeah, me too. It has been it's been lovely. Thank you. Thank you.